Now, the ideal gas law is going to combine all four of our properties of gases. So it's going to combine volume, pressure, temperature, and amount. And how they're related is going to be done with a constant. So the ideal gas law says PV equals NRT. And the first time I learned this, my high school chemistry pro professor teacher said he always called it PIVNERT. It worked. I never forgot it. PV equals NRT. P stands for pressure. V stands for volume, N stands for moles, T stands for temperature, and what the heck is this R? R is a constant, it's a proportionality constant, and it is known as the ideal gas constant. There are actually two values for R, we'll deal with the second one later, but R is not a quantity that you need to memorize. It will always be given to you in a problem on a test, period. It's not something that you need to bother worrying about. At some point, you'll probably remember it because you get tired of writing it down. But R equals 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So what that tells you is these are the units that your pressure, volume, amount, and temperature need to be in. So before you do that, you can check your units. Now, the way that I work ideal gas problems is a little bit different than how the book does. You can choose how you want to do it. I'll work them both ways, and you can decide. So, if you have a graphing calculator or a calculator that is programmable, get it out. And we're going to save ourselves some time. If you don't, it's okay. It's, you don't have to worry about it. But it just saves you a little bit of time. You don't have to go out and buy one. So everybody type 0 .08206 into your calculator. Now hit the button right above the on where it says STO right arrow. That means it's going to store it in your calculator's memory, and we're going to pick a letter. Since it's the ideal gas constant R, why don't we store it as R? So hit the alpha button and find R, which is above the time. All right, does everybody have that? Hit enter. Now, to make sure you did it right, hit alpha R and hit enter. Saves time, yes? You still have to remember the units, but it will save you time. Okay. Now, dinitrogen oxide or monoxide is laughing gas. What is the pressure in atmospheres of how many moles? 0 0.350. and it is at 22 degrees celsius in a five liter container all right there are two ways to work this problem let's start out with pv equals nrt the way the book tells you to solve this problem is to rearrange it <coughs> so this says what is the pressure so it's going to tell you to solve for pressure, so PV equals NRT over V. And then plug it in that way. That's not how I do it, but you will get the same answer. It will work out. Looking at this problem, what's the first thing we actually need to do? Convert Celsius to Kelvin. Yes. So let's add 273. And that gets us, what, 299? Okay. Oh, 295. Okay. 295 Kelvin. Okay. Now, so if you work it this way, you're going to get, now, 
Even if you do it algebraically to keep track of your units, it is easier to write it out in the factor label method. Yeah, you put this, yes. And you put the units on it as well. So N is for moles. So 0 0.350 moles. So if it's above the fraction bar, it goes in the top. Now here's where it gets tricky. It's not meant to be tricky, but just be careful. R is in the top, so that means you write the number in the top, 0 0.08206, and then you write the, fir the part that's in the top of the unit, so that would be liter atmospheres, and then mole Kelvin goes in the bottom. And so then you can use R to cancel your units. So moles are gone. Uh, the next thing in our equation is T for temperature. We've made it 295 Kelvin. Now, if you forgot to convert it to Kelvin, by the time you get here, you can go, oops, Celsius and Kelvin don't cancel each other. Here they do, and so you can make that correction. And then this has volume in the bottom. So we're gonna put volume in the bottom, which is five liters. So five liters. So that cancels out liters and liters. So all the units are canceled out except for atmospheres, which is what the question is asking us to find. Anybody have any questions about how to set this up? Yes. Uh-huh. You would. You would, but if you set it up according to the unit, sometimes the problem is not going to give you all the right units. And so you'll need to make sure you convert your units before you plug in the numbers. And that's fine. Yes. We'll get to some of those. Or we got to convert the units first. All right, so when we do it this way, 0.350 times R times 295 divided by 5, we got 1.69 atmospheres. We good with that? 0.69 atmospheres. Anybody get anything different? You didn't get it? No, I got 16.9. 1.48. 1.48. pretty close. So 0 0.350 times 0 0.08206 times 295 divided by 5. Wait, well, if I had to guess, you probably uh, missed this first zero here. That's how you got 16 would be my guess. Set it up and mess up in the math. Not that big of a deal. I care about the process. Set it up with the correct units. Let's try another one. The volume occupied by 0 0.845 moles of nitrogen gas. Pressure is 1.37 atmospheres. Temperature 317 kelvins. So here the book tells you to start with your equation. We're trying to find volume, so that's V. So V equals NRT over P. So let's plug it in, make sure our units cancel. 0 0.845 moles. R 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres mole Kelvin goes in the bottom be careful how you write that that's why we practice it this way 
T comes next, it goes on the top. 317 Kelvin. Pressure goes on the bottom. 1.37 atmospheres. Cancel out your units. You want volume, you should only have a unit of volume. There's liters. You're good to calculate. So we put this up here. 0.845 times R times 317 divided by 1.37. 16.04. All right. Now I'm going to show you how I like to work these problems. Then I'll ask you if you like it better or worse and we'll decide which way to go. I work gas law problems by starting with R because you know I love units. I love units. So when this says calculate volume. I don't want to remember all that. So I'm going to look at R and say, oh, liters are in the top. Again, most of you are probably going to hate this, but my brain works a little weird. So I always start with R and then I cancel everything else out. So it's just in a different order, but it all works out the same. So moles, 0 0.845. This is how I know I don't get it upside down. Kelvin, 317 Kelvin, atmospheres, 1.37 atmospheres. And then I can convert as I go along. You get the same answer. But I like to start with R. That's not how the book teaches you. So when you do homework and you use the hints, it won't be like this. But does anybody like using R first? Nobody. Jada. All right. Oh, Philip does too. Okay. Yay, there's two people. That's more than I usually get. I'll work them your way most of the time. That's fine. Okay. Let's do this last problem and then we'll be done for the day. We'll start into applications next time. So a piece of dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, has a mass of 28.8 grams and it sublimes, that means it goes directly from a solid to a gas into a large balloon. We don't lose any, all the gas goes into the balloon. What's the volume of the balloon at 22 degrees Celsius and 742 millimeters of mercury? Do we have any units that are acceptable? No, no not at all. So we got to do some work before we're going to plug this in. And again, there's several ways to do it. Most of you are probably going to want to convert your units first, and that's okay. I work it all as one problem. I'll show you that way as well. So what should we convert first? Celsius. Yes, let's do Celsius to Kelvin. That's the easiest one. 22 degrees Celsius. Add 273, so we got 295. Yes, convert Celsius to Kelvin. That's always the easiest one. All right, what else do we need to convert? Grams. We need to convert grams. What do we need to get into? Moles. Moles, yes, how do we do that? Molar mass. Periodic table, yes, molar mass. <coughs> okay, so let's go with 28.8 grams. And molar mass of carbon dioxide is gonna be 12.01 uh, plus 32. 44 or 44.01, depending on how you round, grams per mole of CO2. All right, so let's calculate that out. So 0 0.654, three decimal places looks okay to me. 0 0.654 moles. What else do we need to convert? Yeah, we need millimeters of mercury. What does that unit need to be? 
Atmospheres. All right. What's the conversion for that? It's on the first page. Flip back. 760. That's the conversion you need to know. One atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. Put a star by that. All right. So 0 0.976 atmospheres. All right, now let's take our equation. What's the question asking us to find? Volume. So volume equals nRT over P. So let's use that. It says moles first, 0 0.654 moles, R, 0.8206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And that is exactly how you say it. Liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Kind of make it a song if you want to. All right, what comes next? T, temperature, 295. Okay, and pressure 0 0.976 atmospheres, and we have a volume. Times R, times 295, divided by 0 0.976, whoa, 6, delete. So 16.22 liters. Now, if you like to work it my way, you can. I can do this all in one step and there's not rounding involved. So I start with R, it wants the volume. So I'm gonna go 08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and I'm gonna combine all these conversions into my one equation, except for the temperature. So I'm gonna cancel temperature first, because that's easy. So next, I need moles. That's gonna tell me to put molar mass on the bottom. Problem I'm given, grams, moles cancel. One atmosphere, 760 millimeters of mercury. And 742 millimeters of mercury. And I'm gonna get liters. So without the rounding, R times 295, 28.8, divided by 742, 16.22, same thing. And I took up a lot less paper. You can work it either way.